Hey, welcome back to Minus Letter Live. My guest this segment is Alan Davidoff. He's the president and CEO of Zortex Therapeutics Inc., trading on the CSE under the symbol XRX. Alan, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, James. I appreciate the time. Uh, let's start with an overview. What is Zortex? Zortex is a company that was founded to focus on developing treatments for diabetic nephropathy and for polycystic kidney disease. To diseases where there are no drugs approved currently to treat the progression of that disease and so we think there are enormous opportunities in this space. Mm -hmm. uh, the origins and the science behind uh, this idea come from Dr. Richard Johnson out of the University of Colorado. He really pioneered a lot of the discoveries that happened in the mid-2000s and drove us to this uh, point where we understand that uric acid and aberrant purine metabolism is driving disease. Okay, so uh, for clarity's sake, this is a diabetes treatment, and diabetes affects what, pop what portion of the population? Right, well, you can think about the population largely in terms of uh, our diet and in terms of our ability to control our weight. We know that the North American population is about 70% overweight, about half of that group, so 33% are obese. Uh, diabetes happens to increase with age and with weight control. We know that approximately 30 to 40 percent of individuals are diabetic and about 30 to 40 percent of those individuals will go on to develop some form of progressive kidney disease. Hmm. Wow, it sounds serious. Um, so then at this point how does, uh, how does, what, how does one get to take Zortex? Is it approved uh, for, for use in hospitals, for example? Right. Well, we're an early stage development company. We're preparing for phase two trials to prove the concept that lowering uric acid in these two populations is of benefit. Uh, we aggregated patents in the early 2010s uh, that covered a number of areas where uric acid was leading to health consequences. Mm. Uh, those health consequences, as we discussed, are in diabetes. But importantly, uric acid, even at normal levels, looks like it's driving the speed at which uh, kidney filtering ability decreases. Really? Yeah. So uric acid, I guess, is produced in excess in diabetic tendency bodies? Right. There's two elements to that. Uh, if you're overweight, which tends to go or tends to be associated with diabetes, that means you tend to have circulating, increased circulating levels of uric acid. Uh, but we know from a number of large studies that uric acid sensitivity increases so that diabetic patients' kidneys tend to be exquisitely sensitive to even uric acid in the normal range. Hmm. That tells us that there's an opportunity to lower and maintain uric acid and slow that progression rate. Mm. Those studies that show uric acid is elevated also show that you can reduce the risk by about 20% for every increment of uric acid lowering. Oh, it's interesting. Okay, so phase two studies, um, is that involving humans? Right, so phase two studies are typically uh, involving patients who express the disease. So the design of these studies is to look at patients with polycystic kidney disease or diabetic nephropathy in two phase two studies to really study the effect of uric acid lowering and the amount of uric acid lowering that leads to a benefit and slows the progression of those kidney diseases. Mm -hmm. The importance of slowing the progression is we know very well that if your kidney disease progresses to the point where you lose your kidneys, you need to go to, on dialysis. And what most people don't recognize, and, and the stark reality is, if you begin kidney uh, dialysis treatment today, the odds of living beyond two years are 50-50. Wow. So we think the therapy we're developing allows you to live with healthy kidneys for a longer period of time, so it slows the rate of decline. And the projections look like it could be adding years of healthy life to people's kidneys. Hmm. Great. So how soon till we know that this can be available for people with uh, tendency towards diabetes? 
Well, uh, what we're doing right now is preparing our regulatory documents to start those phase two trials, uh, both in polycystic kidney disease and diabetic nephropathy. We're projecting that those trials will run about 24 months. And so between now and the completion of those trials, which are proof of concept trials and demonstrate, really reproduce what's already been published in the, in the literature, once we can demonstrate that point, we then, for one of the programs, diabetic nephropathy, will need to do additional clinical trials to show that it's safe in that special population of patients. In the polycystic kidney disease program, we feel that there's a way to accelerate that program and potentially have that uh, therapy in uh, patients' hands in perhaps four to five years. Hmm. Okay, and how much, uh, how much capital would you need to raise to get to that point? When one looks at the expense of the two programs and, and developing them through the end of phase two uh, studies, we feel that that can be done for approximately 25 to $35 million. Mm -hmm. And Over. so will you invoke the participation of a larger pharmaceutical partner at some point? Yeah, th that's a great question. And, and we are in discussions with a number of uh, pharmaceutical partners on licensing deals and co-development deals currently. We've had a tremendous amount of outreach for the polycystic kidney disease program. And um, we hope in the next two quarters to have some announcements uh, related specifically to that uh, end. Okay. Alan, let's leave it there for now. That's really a fascinating story. We're going to follow it with interest. Thanks so much for your time today. My pleasure. Very nice to meet you.